This is Python and Excel. If you go to the formula bar, you'll see this new Python preview button group, which has a couple of options, custom Python formula, explore Python samples, reset, reset runtime, diagnostics, and initialization. Before we type any Python code, let's take a look at this initialization button. This is important because this will show us which libraries are imported into the workbook by default. You can see that the initialization settings are currently read only. You can work around this by creating a separate sheet as the first sheet in your workbook and entering desired import statements and settings on this worksheet. So for now, what this is doing is when the service begins, it is importing all of these libraries. So you can use these NP, PD, PLT, and so on without import statements because they're already loaded. Additionally, there are some Excel settings uh, which will become clear in a moment. To create a Python cell, we just type equals PY, open paren. Now you can see it's added that green marker to the left of the cell, and I can now create a data frame by typing DF equals, and then how am I gonna get this data into my data frame? Well, it's actually pretty simple. You can just select it like this. And when you select, you'll see that it, the script has created this XL function or function call with a range reference, which you'll probably be familiar with already, and this headers equals true argument. As well as selecting a range, I can select parts of a table. Here's the rider column. Here's the data from the table. And here's the table with the headers. The use of the enter button is slightly different in a Python cell. If I press enter, it will go to the next line. If I want to execute the cell, I press control enter. By default, this is now showing me the object type that has been executed in this cell. You can either display the object that was created in the cell, or you can display the object as an Excel value. If you see to the left of the formula bar, there's a drop down, and I can change the Python output from the Python object to the Excel value. So doing so shows me the result of the most recent statement in that cell, which of course is just the definition of the DF data frame. Let's change that back to a Python object. The next thing to understand is about row major order. I can reference this data frame in any other cell, providing the data frame is on the same row and to the left of where I reference it from. So I can reference it from any of these cells or it's above where I reference it from. This is row major order. Execution order goes this way and then it moves down, goes this way and then down and goes this way. So think of it like a two dimensional Jupyter notebook. Because of that, if I create a Python cell here, I can use df.columns to show the column names of the data frame. It will show me the object first, but I can change it to an Excel value, year, rank, rider, time, and team. Just to show you this point about row major order, if I try to do the same to the left of the definition of the data frame, it won't work. Control enter. You can see that it's a value. It hasn't worked because it can't reference something that comes after it. Next, I want to show you some useful shortcuts for working with Python and Excel. Particularly, I've highlighted this row three output toggle, which I have not committed to muscle memory yet, but I'm going to try to use in the rest of this video. Control, Alt, Shift, and M will toggle the current cell between Python object and Excel values. So I'm back on the sheet with the data and I've got a Python cell and I've expanded the formula bar. I want to replace the blanks in the team column with uh, the text no team. So this code should do that, uh, makes the replacement and then display the DF data frame. You can see that it's displayed the object and we've got that shortcut, which is control, alt, shift and M. That should display the data frame and you can see that the blanks have been replaced with the text no team. We're not limited to single statements per cell. That would be ridiculous. Let's do some more processing and create a group by object. We'll group the um, data frame by team and count the number of riders in each team, create a new data frame called team rider count. So that's in alphabetical order, which is to be expected. Let's sort it, sort values by equals rider ascending equals false. So now we have a simple pivot of the data to count the number of riders in each team. That's it for now. I am just getting started with this feature in Excel, Python in Excel. 
I will be producing more videos in the coming days. If you want to be notified of those, please follow on LinkedIn, subscribe on YouTube and drop a like and share if you'd like other people to know about it as well. Thanks for watching.